Hello and welcome to Football Daily, where today we've taken on your suggestions and turned our attention to Southampton's rebirth under Ralph Hasenhutl. Just over a year ago, the South Coast side was reeling after a humiliating 9-0 loss to Leicester City. The biggest home defeat in top flight history, it wasn't just a poor result, but seemed to encapsulate Southampton's stagnation. As a team which had formerly led the league in clever cut-price recruitment and out-of-the-box managerial hires, was put to the sword by a young dynamic Foxes outfit, organised by an intelligent and flexible coach. But bravely, the Southampton board stood by coach Hasenhutl and the club rallied, hitting a vein of hot form over Christmas and improving further during lockdown to end the season with five wins in nine, finishing up 11th and just 10 points off Leicester in fifth spot. At the time of writing, Saints are in fourth and despite another humbling loss to Tottenham Hotspur, look realistic candidates for European football. So just how did Hasenhutl mastermind this comeback from the brink? If in doubt, it's best to go back to what you know, and for Ralph Hasenhutl, the Leicester result was a wake-up call, prompting him to drop an experimental three at the back system and switch to the 4-2-2-2 he used at RB Leipzig and Ingolstadt. A modern refit of the classic 4-4-2, it's similar to Diego Simeone's prime Atletico Madrid sides, using two deep midfielders, two narrow wingers and two strikers to create a box around the centre of the pitch making it easier to close down defenders and opposition playmakers as they attempt to move the ball out of defence. But the manager didn't just change the formation, he upped the intensity. Up until the Leicester game, Southampton were a decent pressing side, allowing opponents nine passes on average before attempting a defensive action, a good mark and fifth best in the Prem. But afterwards, opponents only got eight passes before being challenged, and while that may not sound like a huge difference, it boosted Southampton up to number one in the league over the rest of the campaign. The change saw Hasenhutl ask more of his squad, and they responded admirably. James Ward-Prowse posted the best tackle and interception numbers of his career over the back half of 2019-20, and that's continued into 2021, with only Leeds completing more challenges per game than the Saints. In the midfield third, they're especially aggressive, ranking first in that area for tackles and third for pressures, and they're just as dynamic when they win the ball back. Before the 9-0, Saints completed around 11 passes before facing an opposition tackle, but afterwards that dropped to 9.6. Not because they'd become worse at passing, but because they were playing forward more often and attempting riskier balls with the goal of creating high-value chances. Though Southampton were a league-average possession side in 2019-20, only Burnley had a lower pass accuracy than their 73%, as Hasenhutl had his team race upfield in the aim of catching the opposition out. That helped the side overcome their lack of a dedicated creative midfielder by exploiting transition opportunities. Hasenhutl is not so much concerned with possession, his team ranging between 43 and 69% of the ball in the opening eight weeks of this season, as he is with dangerous possession and using deep completions, the number of successful passes which finish closer than 20 metres to the opposition goal, we can see that Saints have gone from 15th in the Prem to 6th when it comes to getting on the ball in the danger zone. Meanwhile, that extra defensive pressure on opponents means they allow very few deep completions themselves, with only Brighton, Man City and Liverpool ahead of them. And while they conceded 12 shots a game in 2019-20, they now give up just 8.6, again behind only Brighton, City and the Reds. Now settled in under Hasenhutl, Southampton players know their formation, their style and their responsibilities. But even with the system working, they've still seen the benefit of some star quality. Danny Ings was a risky buy for Saints in 2019, when they paid Liverpool £20 million, triple the Reds' own outlay, for a striker who had played just 14 league games in three years at Anfield. But it's been one of their best purchases of the last decade. After scoring and assisting 10 league goals in 2018-19, he rocketed up the ranks in 2019-20, netting 22 and creating a further two, the same number of strikes as Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang in 300 minutes fewer. Finishing as the second highest scorer in the Premier League on a goal-shy Southampton meant Ings was responsible for 47% of his club's total attacking output, but he also led the press from the front, with just six players across the whole of the league, topping his 28 pressures per 90 minutes. And while his shot numbers this season have dwindled from three a game to 2.2, Ings has still contributed to seven goals so far, and his partnership with Che Adams is finally bearing fruit. The young Englishman signed for a hefty £15 million from Birmingham City in 2019 took a long time to bed in, failing to score in the top flight for 369 days after his move. But Hasenhutl knew he had a hot prospect on his hands, rejecting a £20 million bid from promotion chasing Leeds in the January window. Adams ended up hitting form at the close of 2019-20 to finish the season with a respectable six-goal involvement in under 1,100 minutes, 
but he's already close to eclipsing that output after two months of the current campaign. In eight fixtures, the 24-year-old has scored three and assisted two at the time of writing, and he and Ings both act as the first line of defence for their team and combine for one expected goal per 90 minutes as a partnership, better than Chelsea's Timo Werner and Kai Havertz in the early going, and suggesting that if Hasenhutl could find a quality creator to supplement his attack, they could produce even more. Despite little money, some bad results and a global pandemic, Ralph Hasenhutl has found a way to maximise the talent at his disposal and craft a team with a clear identity, who pose a threat to any side in the league. And as big clubs like Arsenal and Manchester United continue to recruit haphazardly and struggle to put together consistent form, there's a window for Southampton to soar up the table. The Saints go marching on. So that's all we've got time for on this week's episode of FD Explained, but make sure you get your suggestions in for future videos in the comments below. Please give us a like if you enjoyed this and subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell to never miss a video. We'll see you next time.